of the library of American folklore, those treasured stories such as Huck Finn, Paul Bunyan, and Rip Van Winkle, which have brought us laughter and joy for generations, come the warm, lovable tales of Amos and Andy, created by Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, presented by the Blatt's Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a division of Shenley Industries. On behalf of Blatt's dealers everywhere. Now enjoy Blatt's, Milwaukee's finest beer. I'm from Milwaukee and I ought to know. It's Blatt's, 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 wherever you go. Blatt's is the name you will always hear. Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. Now, the Amos and Andy Show. As you all know, Miss Effie Stevens passed on approximately two years ago at the age of 94. However, it has taken all this time to locate new relatives of the deceased. But now that we're all together here, we can proceed with the reading of the will. First of all, I'd like to mention that... Excuse me, Mr. Marvin, there's a Mr. and Mrs. George Stevens. Ah, uh, pardon me, Mr. Marvin, but you ain't give away no money yet, are you? No, we haven't, Mr. Stevens. Will you please take a seat? Uh, thank you, sir. I just wanted to make sure we were in time for the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Jeff. Hello, Art. How is you, Lucy? What do you say, Ray? Well, Oliverine and Viola. <laughs> in the reading of the will, I don't think it's necessary by any means to go through the legal terminology or the introduction. And if you will bear with me a moment, I'll get to the portion of the will that concerns all of you. I sure would like to know what's in that will for us. I think I'll go up there and see can I get a gander at the thing. George. Hi, a little thirsty. Yeah, you don't mind me having a drink of water, do you? Go right ahead. <laughs> what did you say? Well, there must have been a leak in the glass or something here. Mr. Stevens, will you please take a chair? <laughs> As you all know, Effie Stevens was very proud of the Stevens family and the Stevens name. And it was her concern that the family and the name be perpetuated. Consequently, her will states that there will be a bequest of $2,000 from an established fund to every one of the Stevens family who at any time in the past or future has a male child to carry on the family name. <laughs> well, honey, look like we done struck out again. Let's go, George. Kingfish, come on over. Hi, Amos. Say, Kingfish, you ain't seen my new taxi cab office yet. Come on in, I'd like you to see it. Yeah. Well, you sure got a nice place here, Amos. I wish you a lot of luck. Ah, uh, thanks, Kingfish. I'm trying to expand the business a little. I even spoke to Andy about coming back in the business here with me. I may even put on another cab. Oh, that's great, Amos. Kingfish, you know what that is? That's the first dollar bill the Fresh Air Taxi Cab Company ever made. And you still got it? Yep. Hey, Kingfish, you look down the dumps. Anything wrong? Well, just another bad break. I got on that will stuff this morning. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what happened up there? Well, the only ones what got any money was the one that uh, had a male child, a perforate, uh, named Stevens. Oh, I see. That is tough, all right. Yeah, but since I left there, 
I've been toying with the idea of adopting one. But I don't get as much chance of that. Me and Sapphire tried that a couple of times. And they wouldn't let you adopt none, huh? No, and the reason was they said they was uh, worried about the support. Oh. Well, I don't know what they're worried about. I wouldn't ask the kid to support me till he was at least ten years old. <laughs> well, it's just one of them things, Kingfish. But I sure could use that $2,000, though. But I don't get there's any sense in thinking about it. Because adopting a son is out of the question. You was miles away there, Kingfish. Yeah, Andy. I've been doing a lot of thinking here. What a wonderful thing it is for a father to have a son and a son to have a father. Yeah, that's good, all right. Yeah, Andy, I'm thinking what a wonderful thing a relationship between father and son is. Matter of fact, I was thinking about me and you. You being what you is and I being what I is. Oh, I see what you mean, Kingfish. Do you really, Andy? Yeah, that mean you go out and adopt a couple of sons. Oh, no, no, Andy. I don't think you latched on there. Now, you see, I lonesome for a son, and Sapphire lonesome too. Yeah, well, we'll get an extra one for her. <laughs> Come on, Andy, and sit down and try and pay attention. Andy, I'm going to give it to you right from the heart. I want to adopt you as my son. <laughs> well, what's the matter, son? Uh, what happened? <laughs> I'll drop around again when you feel a little better, Kingfish. Oh, Andy, I mean it. It's been in the back of my mind a long time. Andy, I really want to adopt you as my very own son. Oh, now, wait a minute, Kingfish. This is silly. Why would you want to adopt a grown man like me? Well, Andy, it's just one of them things. You know, if you ain't got your own, you got to take the prefabricated. Uh, it's on and everything. But there's just one thing. I'm as crazy about kids as you is. How about me adopting you? Oh, I don't be getting no crazy ideas like that. Uh, just a thought. Andy, I don't think you realize how beautiful it would be, father and son. Sunday morning in the park, we'd get out there bright and early, father and son playing ball together. All right, Annie, I'll stand right over there and get the feel of the thing. Yeah, get right over there. Uh, back by the door there. All right, son, catch. Whee! <laughs> Of it. Yeah, that was pretty good, all right. Well, Andy, uh, think of the home life you'll have. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Sapphire is going to be just like a mother to you. Come over here, son. Just look at that face, Andy. Just full of motherly devotion, love, and affection. <laughs> oh, of course, that stuff don't come through with these cheap cameras, you know. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, Kingfish. Well, Andy, I don't guess you realize it, that being my son, you live up at our place and you won't have no rent to pay or nothing. And you even get home cooking. Yeah, that don't sound bad at all. Yeah, and another thing, Andy, I ain't gonna live forever, you know. And when I goes, you being my son, everything I have is yours. Yeah, that sounds good. 
Because in that way, I might get back a lot of the stuff you done jipped me out of. <laughs> no, Kingfish, I think you done sold me a bill of goods. It's a deal. But uh, uh, just one thing, though. Does Sapphire know about this arrangement yet? Well, not just exactly, Andy. But I know when I tell her, she's going to want you in the family more than I do. Yeah, well, tell me this. When are you going to post the matter to her? I go on home right now, Andy, and tell her the good news. The Amos and Andy show continues in a moment. <laughs> I'll never forget the day I discovered it. The day we visited the architect to plan our first home. He gave us some fine ideas, including wonderful Blatt's beer. I wanted a modern home, you a Cape Cod. But we all agreed on Blatt's. Well, today, in our Cape Cod home, we still agree on Blatt's mellow and friendly as our home itself. There are some things a man never forgets. One of them is the taste of Blatt's. You'll never forget your discovery of Blatt's either. For Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. So wherever you are, ask for Blatt's. Oh, Sapphire! Sapphire! Oh, George, you're home nice and early. Wait a minute. I want to look at you. Hmm, yeah. There's no two ways about it. You're the motherly type, all right. George, what on earth are you talking about? Well, honey, I've been doing a lot of thinking here lately about something that's lacking in our lives. And I finally come to a decision that you're going to be overjoyed with. Well, what is it, George? We're going to adopt a son. A son? We're going to adopt one? Oh, George, you don't mean it. Well, that's what you always wanted, ain't it? Yes, but we've tried before, and they've always turned us down. Well, honey, this time there ain't going to be no hitches. Oh, George, I'm so excited <laughs> to think of having a son at last. A little son that I can love. And hold on my lap. And the beauty of this, son, you can hold him on your lap or he can hold you on his. <laughs> oh, George, stop your joking. Where did you find him? In the family home? Well, no. Well, it doesn't make any difference as long as he's ours. George, tell me, how old is he? Has he got any teeth yet? Teeth? Well, he got teeth in the uh, front, but he got bridges in the back. <laughs> You're talking about bridges. What are you trying to tell me, George? Who is this child we're going to adopt? Well, uh... Well, uh... Uh... There he is. <laughs> Andy Brown! How dare you! But, honey... I see the whole thing now. You're just trying to adopt him so you can get the $2,000 from the will. But, honey, there's nothing wrong with that. All I'm going to do is adopt Andy until the will is clear, and then we get the $2,000. George Stevens, if you bring Andrew Brown in here, it'll be the first time a mother ever struck her son on the day he arrived. But now... <laughs> I don't know why I'm and I'm leaving on the afternoon train. But look, honey, I... <laughs> yeah, Calhoun... When I told her the story, she hit the ceiling, and the whole plan went up in smoke. Well, you can't blame Sapphire, Kingfish. After all, no woman wants to get up in the morning and find herself the mother of a 240-pound baby. But, Calvin, that $2,000 involved, yeah. Look, Kingfish, a woman don't care nothing about no money when she's thinking about adopting somebody. See, the thing you don't understand is that a woman has got a, 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 a maternal instinct. This has been going on ever since the world began. A, 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 a mother wants a, wants a child that she can fondle and, and, and hold close to her. A mother wants a little child that she can love and whose love she can get in return. She wants a little child that she can caress 
tenderly. <laughs> to plant a kiss on. <laughs> Who run this thing in on me? Oh, I just want to fire all these people in here. Put them in, Dan. Get on out of here. Uh, yes. Yes. Hello. I guess you're right, but I sure would like to have inherited that two thousand dollars. Well, now, Kingfish, since it means so much to you, if I was you, I just wouldn't give up. Why don't you go back and talk to Sapphire again? No, I can't do that, because she's spending a few days in Atlantic City with her mama. Uh, just to... Uh, you mean she's out of town? There's your angle right there. She don't even have to know nothing about this thing. You can adopt Andy, get the money, and then undopt him before she gets back. Hello? Huh? I think you got something there. I am. Yeah. I think I can swing that. I'll get the adoption papers right away, go to court tomorrow and adopt Andy, and get the money before Sapphire get back. I better be hurrying on over to the lawyer right now. Yeah, well, wait a minute, Kingfish. Wait a minute. I've been sitting here thinking about something. Does you get $2,000 for every son you have? Is that right? Then why don't you drop me too and we'll split the daily double? <laughs> will we have to wait very long? No, I think the judge will be here any moment. It looks like we're the only two children that are going to be adopted today. <laughs> A little bit, will you, sonny boy? But this role is reserved for the children who are going to be adopted. Oh, go ahead, move over. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> he looks like he's old enough to be his own father. <laughs> you ask him. No, you ask him. No, you ask him. Well, all right. Did you get that fight either, Pablo? Shh. <laughs> a little boy like you ought to keep your personal remarks to yourself. You got to learn how to disrespect your elders. <laughs> the special adoption court will please come to order. The first application for adoption is by George Stevens. Will Mr. Stevens step up here, please? Yes, sir, Your Honor. I'm coming right up. <laughs> I suppose your application is all in order? Yeah, Your Honor. I want to adopt the son. He's in court, I assume. Oh, yes, sir. That's him right there on the front row. The big child. The one smoking the cigar. He's <laughs> a bug there, ain't he? You mean to say you are filing an application to adopt that man? Yeah, Your Honor, and this arrangement is going to work out fine. Because there's an emptiness in our lives, and there's an emptiness in his. I knew there was an emptiness someplace. <laughs> you step up your face. I assume that being a grown man, you've given this a lot of intelligent consideration. And I guess you have a very good reason for wanting to enter into this adoption. Oh, sure. We're going to play ball every Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no law that states at what age a person can be adopted. So the court has no choice but to approve the adoption. Next case. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Now, this is the copy of the adoption papers sent to us from the court. Well, it looks all right, don't you, Mr. Marvin? Yes, as a matter of fact, my secretary and I had a little discussion over the age. It looked like a typographical error. She said the child was four, and I said the child was two. But we found out we were both right. The child is 42. <laughs> He's a grown up boy, all right. Well, I must say this is a rather unusual adoption, but according to the will, there's no stipulation as to age, so I'd say it's perfectly all right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. There's just one little formality. I'll stop around at your house tomorrow morning with the check. 
I just want to confirm the fact that you've adopted a boy that's living at your home. Well, you'll have the $2,000 with you, won't you, Mr. Marvin? Yes, you can expect me at about 11 o'clock. Okay, that's a date. I'll expect you and the check at 11 o'clock. That's how we got to hurry back home. You know, I completely forgot about Julia's party tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, George doesn't expect us home for another two days, but I don't think there's any point in calling you. No. Say, what time does that train leave in the morning anyway? It leaves at 7, Mama, and as I figure it, we should be in the house no later than quarter of 11. Mm -hmm. Oh, George would be surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> The Amos and Andy show continues in a moment. They've approved this copy, Jim, so I think we'd better push it from now on. Chief, he says he's got a wonderful idea for a Blatt's beer commercial. Want to look it over? Okay, let's see it. I'm from Milwaukee, and I ought to know it's Blatt's, 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 Blatt's. That's fine, but we don't need any tricks to sell Blatt's beer. The Blatt's story is simple as one, two, three. One, Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. As soon as folks taste it, they agree. Two, Blatt's is the largest selling beer in Milwaukee, year after year, and Milwaukee is where the best beers are brewed. Three, Blatt's is fast becoming a favorite everywhere. In fact, it's Blatt's, 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 wherever you go. Come on and I'll show you. You know, he's right. Yes, Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. So wherever you are, ask for Blatt's. Well, son, it's ten thirty. Son, son. <laughs> Where I'm in. What is you? <laughs> oh, hello, Bob. Well, how did you sleep? Oh, I had to come with this strange bed. You know how quick you got in here? I must roll and toss for 15, 20 seconds before I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah? Well, I go on out now and get something for breakfast. Then I expect somebody here an hour or so in connection with the adoption. Oh, yeah, then. Well, you can keep on snooting if you want to. I'll let them take a peek at you to confirm everything. But by the way, uh, what you want me to get for breakfast? Mm, let me see. Um, uh, how about some orange juice and some oatmeal and some pancakes and waffles and four or five scrambled eggs and coffee? Holy mackerel, I done doctored a tapeworm here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, for that long. Well, all right, I'll run down the back steps to the store. So long, Pop. Well, goodbye, son. So long. You were right, Sapphire. You said we would be home in a quarter of a lamp. I wonder if George is home yet. I don't know. Guess he must be gone out already. Yeah, guess so. Well, I'm going in and unpack, Mama. Me too, Sapphire. I'm going to call. 
call the police. I'm going with you. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Andrew Brown, what are you doing in this apartment? Well, where else would you expect your son to live? Son, you were in my bedroom. That's right. Where are you going to sleep, Grandma? Grandma! <laughs> I thought you knowed about it, Sapphire. The kingfish has adopted me. And he told me that from now on, I'm living in the lapdog of luxury. So he went ahead with the adoption after all. Just wait till he gets back. Listen, Andy, the only reason he adopted you was to get $2,000 from a will. Well, he told me it was because he wanted to play ball and everything. <laughs> Andy Brown, I'm surprised that you've fallen for a thing like this. Why, you ain't got sense enough to come in out of the rain. I is, too. I've done it lots of times. <laughs> All I can say. Sonny boy, I home. Annie. Well, what you two doing home? You wasn't supposed to come home for two days yet. It's lucky we did. Andy has already told us the whole story. Now, wait a minute, honey. Everything gonna work out just fine. Listen, Kingfish. Quiet. Honest, honey, this is the smartest thing that I ever done pulled. Kingfish, you got some nerve pulling a stunt like this on me. I told you to keep quiet. Now, listen to your father. <laughs> And say is this is the rottenest trick you've ever pulled, and I'm going to see that you don't get the money. Now, wait a minute, honey. I, uh... Good morning, Mr. Marvin. Would you mind coming back in about an hour? Nothing doing. Come right in, Mr. Marvin. I've got some news for you. Well, what seems to be the trouble? Mr. Marvin, the only reason my husband wants to adopt Andy there is to get the $2,000 from the will. Is this the son you adopted, Mr. Stevens? That's right, sir. Well, Mrs. Stevens, the adoption papers are in order. Mr. Stevens has lived up to the will. Well, I just don't think it's right that he should get the $2,000 for a thing like this. You heard what the man said, Sapphire. The thing is legal. And Mr. Marvin, I is glad to know that you is an honest man. And if you don't mind, I'll take the check. Just a moment, Mr. Stevens. Didn't you understand the terms of the will? What are you talking about? According to your cousin Effie's will, the $2,000 check goes to your son. Thanks for everything, Father dear. Open the door. Open the door, son. I love you, Andy. I love you. Open the door, son. Open the door for Pop. The Amos and Andy Show has been presented by Black, Milwaukee's finest beer. The Amos and Andy Show is shown to our armed forces overseas on film. <laughs> <laughs>